Hi, big love and welcome back to the channel. I'm Divine MC and we're gonna do another timeless tarot today. It's around September here on the East Coast, getting right ahead into fall and a bunch of planets are retrograde. But whenever this finds you, it's meant for you. So I've got pile A over here with the beautiful rose quartz heart. Pile B with the fool's gold, pyrite, and pile C with the blueberry azurite with malachite. And for those that like to pick with sound, my pile A's. My pile B's. Timestamps will be marked below, and I'll see you back at your reading. Bye. Welcome back, my pile A's. If you chose the gorgeous rose quartz heart, then this is your reading. And today I didn't shuffle beforehand, so bear with me. see what's going on presently for my pile A's. So the blockages you've been having with passion and putting your creativity and things that you enjoy on the back burner is resolving itself. And I feel like you're gonna use memories of past loved ones to help encourage you to create again and to move forward positively with lessons. So let's move past This was a time in the past where you had given your power away and you got stuck for a while and it was hard to move on and you still continue to put a brave face on and pretend like nothing was bothering you, but you were actually suffering a lot in silence. Future, lots of chakra cards coming up here. Wow, three chakra cards in the future. You're going to be working on your solar plexus, which is your personal power. You're going to be working on your base chakra, which has to do with your finances, your survival instincts, and what roots you to the earth. And then you're also going to be working on your self-expression and your throat chakra. So I would suggest doing meditations on all three of those here soon. And this last card really was dying to come out. Heartache and loss. You must have just got over a breakup or someone passed away. My condolences and things are looking up. Things are turning. I'm going to check the bottom of the deck energy. Temptation. Don't let temptations from the past suck you back in. Whether it's an ex-lover, addictive tendencies, impulsive decisions self-sabotage just don't do it start meditating and you won't do it okay so we've got some oracle cards and a little bit of homework always comes with the oracle cards and today we're pulling a sacred tree 
So which sacred tree do my pile A's need to look into? And I want you to look up this tree and figure out its lore and its medicinal properties. Blackthorn. You got the blackthorn tree. So that's part of your homework is to look into this tree. Okay, next we've got the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms from Colette Farron Reed. And I'm not sure where the book is, so I can't give you all the detailed book information. So we're just gonna go intuitively off today. I have been doing a lot of Reiki at my suite in Bel Air, so some of my tools are there. <laughs> Things are kind of spread around right now. So my pile B has got the lady of the gift, generosity, receiving and withholding. I feel like the time of withholding is coming to an end and the generosity and receiving is coming in for you now, which is awesome because you deserve it. And other than the rose quartz, I'm also pulling a crystal oracle. So I'll give you a little bit about the rose quartz that you chose in the beginning of the reading. Ooh, they are flying out. Rutilated quartz. Okay, so I wanna tell you a little bit about both. Let's get in here. Oh, there's the rose quartz. Love, gentleness, emotional healing, release of stress, uniting with the divine, opening of the heart chakra, the element water, supports the physical heart and healing from trauma and or disease, emotionally aids in releasing past wounds, teaching trust and hope and spiritually encouraging love and links with one, it links one with the great mother. Rose quartz, is the pure stone of love for oneself, one's partner, children, family, friends, community, the earth, the universe, and the divine. Meditating with rose quartz brings an envelope of love around oneself and activates the heart chakra, healing the heart of its wounds and reawakening its trust. Its soothing vibrations are a balm to the emotions. They calm and cleanse the entire auric field and engenders the release of tension and stress, the dissolution of anger and resentment, and the dispelling of fear and suspicion and the rebirth of hope and faith. So, rutilated quartz. Programmable for attunement and amplification, acceleration, expanding awareness, quickening and grounding manifestations. So I'd be careful with this one because it works fast. Supports a speedy healing process, element storm, chakras all, aids hair growth and quality, emotional intensifies feelings, quickens emotional catharsis, breeds optimism, spiritually aids telepathy and intuition, amplifies one's power of manifestation. It sizzles with energy. It feels almost electrified. Um, can be used to activate any intention or affirmation. It'll magnify its energy. Um, the rutile threads act like an electric energy singing through the wires of a circuit. That's really cool. I can't speak, I guess it's mercury. <laughs> Rutilated quartz helps one instantly know if a person or situation carries good or bad vibes. It amplifies intentions and emotions. It quickens the process of manifestation, intuition, emotional catharsis, psychic opening, consciousness expansion, and interdimensional travel. So yeah, I would get a couple of those stones and start incorporating them into your solar plexus base and throat chakra meditations we were talking about earlier. All right, so next is your power animal, and my pile A has got the swan. And if swan shows up, it means no matter what is happening in your life right now, do whatever it takes to keep your faith strong. It's important to accept your life circumstances and to, to surrender to the will of spirit, trusting that all will work out. You'll soon find clarity and purpose in the confusion that you're experiencing. Focus on the fact that life is a precious and sacred gift and express your gratitude and appreciation in as many ways as possible. Whatever changes you're going through, go with the flow. If it's a trumpeteer swan, let others hear you by expressing yourself in a clear and concise way. Enhance your gracefulness through the study of yoga or tai chi. 
If it's a whistler swan that you resonate with more, make it a point to whistle a tune out loud at least once a day and see how it feels. If it's a mute swan, find a place where it's very quiet and meditate there for several minutes for a couple of hours or a full day and be silent with no talking. Call on swan when you have to deal with a variety of business and social situations that require you to be poised and confident. You've been so focused on the mundane that you've forgotten about the magic and mystery of life and want to connect with it. You're out of touch with the beauty in yourself and others and all around you and want to appreciate this more consistently. You're ready emotionally and spiritually for your soulmate and want to manifest this person and you need to defend or protect your mate or your family yet to do so in a way where you maintain your composure and calmness. If swan is your power animal, you exude a sense of calm and gracefulness and are very much at ease with yourself and others. You're very adept at gliding through the waters of change easily and effortlessly, moving smoothly with the daily rhythms of life. You're highly intuitive, often to the point of foreseeing the future. You shine with an inner beauty and walk through the world with humility and poise. You're very powerful psychically and spiritually and are highly protective of your loved ones. Moving right along. Let's get into the big book. And my pile A's got Padre Pio. And Padre Pio will help you heal from any type of wound or disease, have a strong relationship, connected with loved ones, dead or alive, deepen your spiritual connection, help you to forgive, feel the presence of angels and guides, make wise decisions and develop your discernment. Padre Pio's invocation since he was a man of great faith. So when you wish to gain his assistance, place a rose at the base of a simple cross and expect great miracles to occur in your life. Any request made with an open heart and a willingness to embrace forgiveness is sure to be graciously answered. He excels at helping you see the true nature of your challenges and he is a miracle worker, so call upon him often. From an early age, Francisco Forgione desired to become a priest because of his deep faith in God. He prayed ceaselessly, and in 1910, his prayers were answered when he became a priest. Padre Pio was in poor health most of his childhood and suffered from tuberculosis for many years. In 1918, while praying and giving thanks before a large crucifix, the marks of the stigmata, the wounds of Christ, appeared on his body. He was cured of tuberculosis, but carried the wounds of stigmata for the rest of his life. His wounds were said to give off the scent of roses. Padre Pio had many extraordinary spiritual gifts, including the ability to heal to bilocate to prophecy to perform miracles to levitate to see angelic beings and to discern spirits he was able to go without sleep and nourishment and he could speak and understand languages he had never studied and he could multiply food and drink he was known to appear in confessionals all over the world his invisible presence marked by the fragrance of roses he taught people to explore the underlying cause of their problems and then ask them to forgive themselves and others miraculous healing took place each time a person opened his heart or her heart to forgiveness. As a young priest, Pope John Paul traveled a great distance to have Padre Pio hear his confession. Padre Pio died in 1968. He had often promised that after my death, I will do more. My real mission will begin after my death. The marks of stigmata disappeared immediately after his death. Wow. Oh, Padre. Amazing. I find it interesting that all the Catholic uh, <laughs> saints and deities uh smell like roses when they're around or the <laughs> something of the sort all right so last but not least in the book work i've got the art of worldly wisdom written in the 17th century by a jesuit and my pile a's got never talk about yourself to do so, you must either praise yourself, which is vain, or blame yourself, which is weak-minded. It is unseemingly for the speaker and unpleasant for the listener. And if you should avoid this in ordinary conversation, how much more so in official matters and above all in public speaking, where every mere appearance of unwisdom really is unwise. The same want of tact lies in speaking of someone in his presence, owing the danger of going to ones of two extremes, flattery or censor. Very interesting. Now, I'll have you gaze upon me trinkets. What coming out? Woo, they're flying. Let me grab that one. What was he? Oh, a flower. Got a couple flowers. So, things are blooming, growing. You're about to harvest. There's that quartz coming up again. You've got some major manifestation abilities. There's gonna be a mending back and a security in a relationship. Tread carefully. Q. 
cue. <laughs> what a strange letter to come up. Maybe you're embarking on a quest soon, a trip, and you need to get grounded. That root, that base chakra is coming up again. Maybe go walk barefoot, sit at the base of the tree on your next meditation. All right, y'all, that's all I'm getting for you today. I wanna to thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be putting up a meditation here soon and we stream music every week. This Sunday though, we have a gig in Philly, so we won't be streaming, but we'll be back on next Sunday and it'll be drum and bass. So if you're in need of some tunage, definitely subscribe. Until then, slay the week. And I'll catch you next time. Big love, peace, and blessings from Divine MC. Over and out. Bye. Welcome back, my pile bees. If you chose the beautiful pyrite, I'll definitely incorporate that into your reading later. I'm also doing another crystal oracle later as well. I didn't pre-shuffle, so bear with me. You chose also the... Celtic Dragon deck that I've been reading with since I was like 19. It's my first tarot deck. All right, let's see what's going on with you present wise. Presently, I see you just got over something that was exhausting to say the least. Um, you're kind of going into the cocoon. You've got some ideas brewing, but they're not ready to come out. And I need you to be patient because things are falling into alignment before you can move forward. Plus you need to rest. You just went through battle. Moving past, I see a move. You moved probably to the West Coast or somewhere where there's a lot of trees and nature. Um, it was a great move. Uh, I see a lot of money and financial stability. And then I see you getting in with the wrong people and getting into some drinking and drugs and such and partying too much and masking feelings and things like that. Um, let's move future. Oh, I see a wedding. Somebody's getting married. Uh, seven of cups. Don't keep biting off more than you can chew. I love the ambition and the motivation. But when you put way too much on your plate, your insecurities and stuff and self-sabotage will be your downfall. I also see a beautiful connection with your best friend or child or someone you're really close with blooming. They look younger. So someone you might mentor or someone that has a childlike spirit. Um, I want to see bottom of the deck energy is judgment. So there might be a big decision coming up soon. All right. I want to move into your oracles and of course you know my oracles come with homework and everybody's getting a tree today and you need to look into the lore and mythology of this tree why it's connecting with you and what medicinal and healing properties or benefits oh this tree has for you and my pile bees got heather oh my name is heather i didn't even know there was a heather in here as they say no two heathers look alike very cool they grow on the scottish highlands and in ireland from what i know off the tip of my head all right i'm also doing wisdom from the hidden realms colette baron reed i misplaced the book i've been doing a bunch of reiki at the shop and a lot of my tools are here and there i've got to get reorganized so we're just going to go intuitive today off of what I see in the pictures. The Ice Queen, ideas preserved, non-action and entitlement. Man, this kills you to have to sit still, doesn't it? Oh, I resonate with that so much because I am the same way. But uh, this stems down to, well, late stage capitalism in our country, if you're in the US, probably in the world as well because of globalism. Uh, we've made it so we feel guilty when we rest because we feel like we should constantly be producing and constantly making money. And I've been reminded recently that hobbies, there needs to be some hobbies that are just for you and you're totally worthy and still relevant when you're resting. And sometimes we need to rest. And a lot of times when we don't rest, 
The universe will force us to rest by like a stupid injury or an accident or something that'll keep us housebound and sitting still. So you might want to just listen and slow down now for fall winter and you know reap that harvest and calm down a little bit make some plans and then maybe emerge again in the spring like a beautiful butterfly all right next the crystal oracle so i'll give you a little bit about the fool's gold or pyrite that you picked and also what you're about to get in the crystal oracle here so my pile bees, if you please. Tiger's eye. Interesting that both of these I use near the solar plexus, right? They're both yellow, golden, orangey, so solar plexus and sacral stones. Um, let me see here. Oh yeah, there it is. Tiger's eye. Balance between extremes, discernment, vitality, strength, practicality, fairness. Chakras are solar plexus and third, which is your sexual or sacral and root, which is your first element is fire and earth. Physical supports hormonal balance, enhances general vitality. So that will help you with the fatigue. Uh, facilitates finding emotional harmony with others. Instill spiritual balance, stamina, creativity, and clarity. It's a stone of physical action. Mental clarity activates the and wets the intellect, sharpening the sword of logic. Opens the mind to embracing paradox, energizing the body. Strength to overcome fatigue or discouragement. Aligns the lower chakras. So you can draw on your primal strength, creativity, and enlightened intention. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. So, uh, fool's gold, pyrite. If I knew my alphabet. There it is. All right. Masculine energy, manifestation, action, vitality, willpower, creativity, and confidence. So yeah, you, you shouldn't be working with these until your period of rest is complete. Because <laughs> these stones are just going to keep pushing you. Supports male reproductive health, aids in fighting infection, encourages mastering fear, taking assertive action. And also, if you're a female, it's really important to get into your feminine energy as well. You can't always be in the masculine energy because it throws things off of balance. It, it messes up our ability to receive. And the thing with the feminine energy is the, the female energy just sits back and allows things to be magnetized to them. And the male energy is the seeker that goes out and like has that action tendency to like almost force things to happen. So there needs to be the balance of both here. Regardless of if you're male or female, this is going beyond gender. I'm talking about the energy. <laughs> Pyrite stimulates creativity in art, mathematics, sculpture, architecture, science, and other disciplines. It feeds the qualities of ambition, commitment, and persistence. It increases mental clarity and focus. It supports one in taking assertive action, developing the inner warrior for the benefit of the community. All right, so... Let's get into the big book and my pile bees got Namahaho Keikai. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I could be butchering it. Namahaho Keikai will help you connect with an incredible power and wisdom, access the expansive energy of creation, attract abundance, feel nurtured and loved, manifest your wildest dreams, Namahaho Kehai is the goddess of the ocean where all water began. So if you're a dehydrated bitch like me, take a sippy. Hold a glass of water and think about the beauty of this planet and give thanks for its life-giving ability to invoke Namahamo Kehai. Imagine filling the water with your love and gratitude and speak forth your request and let Namahamo Kehai into your heart and into your mind. She never denies a heartfelt prayer, especially one filled with gratitude for already having received the gift. Namahaho, Nama 
Ha'okekai is the goddess of the ocean who lovingly embraces the Hawaiian islands. She has had a long-standing rivalry with her sister Pele. She demands respect and can easily swallow up a careless person. Very little is written about Namaho Kekai because the Hawaiian tradition is an oral tradition, but anyone who has stood at the edge of the ocean and been mesmerized by the waves has felt her presence. There are millions of words written about the mystery, magic, and elusive call of the sea. Those writers have all been inspired by Namahao Keikai. She is the source of great abundance and contains the wisdom of the ages. An incredible number of different cultures, creatures live within her. She lovingly gives life to whales and dolphins, beautiful fish, incredible coral, and hundreds of other beings. If you've ever seen a video of a jellyfish propel itself through the water, you will have a sense of her graceful energy. If you stand by the shore and watch a storm swell and hit the beach, you know how powerful she is. Namaho Keikai is a wonderful goddess to know. Beautiful. And let's do your power animal. And my pile of bees got elephant. If elephant shows up, make it a point to be of service in some way to the young, elderly, or those less fortunate than yourself. Do not let anything stand in the way of attaining this goal that is so integral to your purpose. You have the determination and persistence required to overcome the current challenges you're faced with. Trust your senses, and if something in your life smells bad, take the necessary action to do away with it. Remain loyal to those closest to you, in spite of anyone's questioning their integrity. It's a good time to renew your sense of connectedness to the divine. Call on elephant when you're feeling alone and isolated from any sense of family or community. When there are mental, emotional, or physical obstacles in your path that seem to block you from achieving your goals or following your mission. When you're feeling tired, weak, or depressed and want more energy and vitality. When you want to feel more confident and want to increase your libido and encourage romantic feelings. When you find yourself in a position of power and responsibility, one that requires you to be strong and an effective leader. And if elephant is your power animal, you have an insatiable hunger for knowledge and continually seek to understand things. You're at your best doing some kind of political or social work or otherwise being in a responsible position of public service. You have an innate capacity for drawing on ancient wisdom and communicating this whenever appropriate. You're a passionate and uninhibited lover who's quite able to satisfy and please your partner. Once you set your mind to something, there's nothing that will stop you from obtaining it. I see that. Your ambition is like... Might be a Sagittarius because I have Sag rising and I, I just can't turn the fire off. Like once I achieve one goal, I'm already on to the next. Like it's hard for me to sit there and appreciate what I've just accomplished because I'm already on to the next. All right. Last but not least, The Art of Worldly Wisdom written in the 17th century by a Jesuit. My pile bees. You got know how to transplant yourself. There are nations with whom one must cross their borders to make one's value felt, especially when in great posts. Their native land is always a stepmother to great talents. Envy flourishes there on its native soil, and they remember one's small beginnings rather than the greatness one has reached. A needle is appreciated that comes from one end of the world to the other, and a piece of painted glass might outve the diamond in value if it comes from afar. Everything foreign is respected partly because it comes from afar, partly because it is ready-made and perfect. We have seen a person once the laughing stock of their village and now the wonder of the whole world, honored by their fellow countrymen and by foreigners, by the latter because they come from afar and by the former because they are seen from afar. The wood statue on the altar is never reverenced by him who knew it as a tree trunk in the garden. So this is about a lot of, I know a lot of artists and musicians watch my channel because that's what I am. And uh, this is... <laughs> This is so funny because this has been coming up for Brian and I as well, that people in your local area like never really support you. It's like people overseas in England that hold down Brian and I way more than people right here in the DMV, which is really honestly crazy because we could do so much more together if we all supported each other. Um, but this is telling you to maybe change locations and your art and your music is going to get recognized. And, um, B Hop and I are just gonna build a sound system and travel and then everyone's gonna wanna play on it and I'm gonna tell them no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm too nice. Anyway, all right, let's finish up. I would like for you to gaze upon me trinkets and see what we got in here. Oh my goodness. Oh, they are just spilling out today. This queue keeps coming up. I feel like you're going on a trip, a quest. Could be internal, could be external. Don't forget to fill yourself up before you start 
pouring into everyone else as well. Either your boss is going to promote you or you're becoming the boss. May of next year is going to be a really important month. You're super fertile right now. You get two seashells. Um, so that's good if you're trying to have a kid. Maybe not so good if you're not. So be careful. Bears. What do bears do? They hibernate all winter. <laughs> you're just going to have to sit and let this stuff marinate. Um, there's definitely going to be some things blooming that you planted this spring. So you're about to harvest. All right. That's all I'm getting for you today. We won't be streaming Sunday because we have a gig in Philly. But next Sunday, we'll be back on streaming some drum and bass. So definitely sub to the channel because I'm also going to have a fresh meditation out. And we'd love to have you back. Big love, peace, and blessings going out from Divine MC. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye. Welcome back, my pile seas. If you chose this beautiful blueberry azurite malachite jaunt, this one is for you. You chose the shaman wisdom cards. New deck, so bear with me. Bear with me. I didn't pre-shuffle. So let's see what's going on with you present-wise. My pile sees presently, presently. Hmm, I see you've been resting. Been up in your head a little bit though. Things have been pretty balanced though. Things are going well in your relationship. You've had a nice summer, you've gotten to swim, dip your toes in the water, maybe get to the beach a little bit. Gotten some perspective on some things this summer. Let's move past. Ooh, turquoise. In the past, you had some trouble balancing the masculine and the feminine. Especially the feminine ends of things. Badger. Grass moon. I see a time where you either got a pet or had a child as well, which totally changed things. Throat chakra is coming up. Your self-expression. So a lot of times becoming a new mother and stuff, you kind of feel like you lose yourself a little bit because you're all into the kid and things like that. Let's move future. In the future... You're going to still be working on balancing that feminine energy. You're two in the masculine. This came up in the last reading. I see you traveling again in the fall, winter, maybe to a lake. If you struggle with allergies, seasonal allergies, get on some stinging nettle. And you're also going to have a jump start in your creativity again in the future as well. So whatever you've been putting on the back burner, you're going to get ready. You're going to have the energy to complete it. Bottom of the deck energy. There goes that sacral chakra. So yeah, you need to work and meditate on your sacral chakra. And meditation will also help the intrusive thoughts and the overthinking. Okay, so let's get into your oracles. Everyone's getting a little homework. I pulled the tree deck out again. It feels relevant moving into fall here soon. So I want you to look up the mythology and the lore associated with this tree and its healing and medicinal benefits because there's reasons why it's around you. And you got the ash. So definitely look into that. I'm also doing the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms from Colette Baron Reed, but I've left the book at the shop by accident. I've been doing a lot of Reiki there recently, so my tools are kind of scattered. Got to get organized. <laughs> my pile B's got Queen of the Light, Illumination, Enlightenment, and Celebration. So all this introspection you've been doing, 
traveling you've been doing has given you a lot of perspective and where you want to go and what you want to do and you've definitely achieved some things too that need celebrating and for the crystal deck i'm going to give you a little bit about the azurite and malachite but we'll see what else you get from the crystal oracle Charo White. Charo White's keywords are revealing one's path of service, purging inner negativity, protection, healing. The chakras are the third eye, crown, soul star, solar plexus, which was coming up. Um, root. We'll see element wind, physical aids in overcoming illnesses caused by past life attachments. Emotional helps one to dispel nightmares, overcoming fears, unconditional love, spiritual initiates psychic protection, etheric purification, and more synchronicities. Charway is powerfully known for emanating the purple ray. It is therefore used to purify and cleanse one's etheric body, releasing disharmonies and dispelling negativity, which I feel like is connected to St. Germain and the Violet Flame. The Violet Flame, you can look up decrees. You set an intention before you start decreeing. You read the decrees aloud over and over again, getting faster and faster till you've built enough energy. And then that energy will go towards your intention. If there's energy left over i always ask that any leftover energy be sent to where it's needed most in the universe um and you can also write your own decrees whatever resonates for you but that's definitely coming up just know when you work with violet energy it works fast and quick um, it can help you access past life memories and integrate the lessons of past life experiences for those suffering from difficult to diagnose maladies that have their roots in internalized negativity or fear char white can be a powerful aid it can help one merge the heart and crown chakra energies allowing for deeper spiritual insights in an inner climate of unconditional love. And let's look at the Azurite So Azurite helps insight, vision, intuition, intellect, third eye, crown, element, wind, helps with migraines, tinnitus, vertigo, overall brain health, supports insight into emotion, inspires emotional growth, spiritual initiates, inner visions, intuitive leaps of spiritual understanding. It's a car car copper carbonate mineral found in Australia, Russia, Chile, China. Stimulates the third eye chakra. It's a stone of inner vision and can be used for the enhancement of dreams and development of psychic powers. It can stimulate intellect as well as intuition. It can aid in the assimilation and retention of new information and ideas. Can help strengthen the astral and etheric bodies, making one less vulnerable to psychic attack or attachments. I feel like you should do some protection work because that keeps coming up. Maybe an egg cleanse. Sage the house. You know. Some spiritual housekeeping. Um, so let's see, it blends well with Malachite, which the piece I have has both. So let's get into a little bit about what the Malachite is doing. And then you'll have the full picture of that stone. Oh, there it goes. Malachite aids in building self-confidence, emotional clarity, facilitates psychic protection, manifestation, enhances will forces, solar plexus, heart. Element fire increases vitality, supports tissue repair and recovery from illnesses, recommended for inflammation, arthritis, digestion, and detoxification. Enlightened leadership, creativity, confidence, protection, and a healed heart. It permeates the auric field with positive vibrations and strengthens the natural energetic shell, which can screen out hostile forces and activates the psychic radar. So you might also be empathic as well. Perfect. So let's move on to your power animal. And my pile, see, has got the chinchilla. So cute. If chinchilla shows up, it means 
Investigate and consider donating some time, energy, or money to animal rights and organizations. Trust your instincts to tell you when to go forward, when to retreat, and when it's the right time to act, and what the right course of action is. It's best to stand back and carefully observe what's going on before making your next move rather than relying so heavily on in intellectual analysis to solve a problem or make a decision. Take a deep breath and notice your gut feelings and see how they balance and complement your analytical skills. It's important at this time that you maintain a healthy diet and a good exercise regimen for optimal health. There's something out of balance in your life and it's in your best interest to do whatever it takes to bring things back into balance. Call on Chinchilla when timing is critical for you as far as when you want to make your next move. You're due for a detoxification cleanse, particularly if it's a change of season, which it is soon, you're, you're having any kind of communication difficulties with someone who want to straighten things out. Something is off, out of balance, and you want to correct it. Physically, you're not feeling 100% and want to make some changes in your diet and the amount of exercise you're doing. If chinchilla is your power animal, you're always very curious about the details of your surroundings, wherever you happen to be. Once you feel safe and secure, you approach life with innocence and a sense of adventure. You're very effective and accurate when it comes to discerning the meaning of signs and omens. You're a keen observer with a good memory of whatever it is you're seeing and hearing. You effectively balance your remarkable analytical skills with your attention to your instinctual promptings. So we're going to move on to angels and guides in the big book. And you got Sedna. She's gorgeous. Beautiful mer lady. Yes, so pretty. Sedna will help you know what will make your lover happy, stay warm, connect with abundance, find anything, even the perfect outfit, and throw a wonderful party. Invocation for Sedna is a warm and caring goddess. She will surely answer you if you ask sincerely. If you aren't sure you're willing to make the necessary changes, ask her to help you find the willingness. She knows about dashed hopes and dreams, so she will do everything in her power to help you avoid disappointment. Sedna is the sea goddess and a master of animals, especially the mammals of the sea, such as the seals, whales, and dolphins. Her father is Anguta, the creator god. In one tale, she was a beautiful young woman and a virgin who was lured into marriage by an evil bird spirit. When her father tried to rescue her, the spirit caused such a huge storm that it threatened the existence of the people. In desperation, her father threw her into the angry sea. There are many different versions, but in all of them, Sedna's father sends her to her death. But in all the tales, she descends into the depths of the ocean and becomes the goddess of sea creatures. As such, she became a vital deity, eagerly worshipped by hunters who depended on her goodwill to supply food. Sedna will help you connect with the core of your being, but she will ask you some questions. What you are fooling yourself about. Do you say what you want to get in shape and then consistently overeat and put off going to the gym? Hi, that's me. <laughs> um... Is your checkbook balanced and do you pay off your credit cards each month or does your debt continue to grow? Can you look at yourself in the mirror and love who you see? What gifts do you stop yourself from receiving? Are you willing to make any changes necessary to allow an abundance of bounty into your life now? Beautiful. All right, last but not least in the book work, we've got Art of Worldly Wisdom, written by a 17th century Jesuit, still relevant today, and you got Set Difficult Tasks for Those Under You. Many have proved themselves able at once when they have had to deal with a difficulty just as fear of drowning makes a person into a swimmer. In this way, many have discovered their own courage, knowledge, or tact, which, but for the opportunity, would have been forever buried beneath their lack of initiative. Dangerous situations are the occasions to create a name for oneself, and if a noble mind sees honor at stake, he will do the work of thousands. Queen Isabella the Catholic knew well this rule of life as well as the others, and to a shrewd favor of this kind, the great captain won his fame and many others earned an undying name. By this great art, she made great men. This is about delegating. All right, I would like for you to gaze upon me trinkets. You have plenty of time. I don't want you to feel like anxious or anxiety ridden. You have all winter. Your heart chakra needs to be brought back in balance. Something you planted in the spring is now blooming and ready to harvest. 
money's coming in, so don't worry about that. Gather what you need now from the harvest, though, to prepare for winter because you're going through a little bit of a hibernation. Solar plexus is definitely coming up again. Self-love needs to be a big thing, and your connection to spirit, source, God, creator, whatever it is, uh, needs to be a priority as well. All right, my pile C's is all I'm getting for you today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We won't be streaming music Sunday because we have a gig in Philly, but we'll be back on with the drum and bass next Sunday, 5 p.m. EST. Definitely hit subscribe though because I'll be putting up a fresh meditation on the channel too and a bunch of you got meditation coming up in readings today. So it will be good for you to tune back in and do them. Until next time, big love going out from Divine MC. Peace and blessings. Bye.